Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Micromarch team. Our advisor is Dr. Jing Dong and Dr. Heidel Jingjing. We have four members in our team, which is Mario, Wong, Peter, and me, Will. In this presentation, I will introduce about this traditional Micromarch project. Uh, I will talk about ASPEC, our design approach, and I will also say something about the overall uh, design. And then uh, Mario and uh, Peter will talk. Uh, will explain the subsystem function, so that everyone everyone will be clear <coughs> which part is doing what job. And then uh, Juan is going to put them together, talk about the main system, and also some de uh, design details. Uh, in the last section of this presentation, we will show our uh, the performance of. It is a micro mouse. It is a small autonomous robot which can navigate through a maze to find the center. Uh, it's just like a real uh, mouse. It has a sensor in the eyes. It has a microcontroller as an intelligence brain. It also has the motor and the wheels as the legs. Uh, this uh, this micro mouse that was designed to participate in a computation in which it will solve a 16 by 16 cell maze. Well, whoever make it to the center in the shortest time can. Okay, uh, based on this. Uh, Computation uh, requirements. Uh, we in the first quarter we we generate this uh, ASPEC analyze. For example, uh, our micro mouse cannot be too big to to fit into the maze. It has to uh, meet some minimum uh, speed requirement to get through the center in a, in a fixed time. And we have uh, five hundred dollar uh, budget. So obviously, the micro mouse cannot cost more than that. We started to do research on different parts. Uh, we figure out we will use uh, a sharp IR sensor, Arduino board with a microcontroller, and uh, DC motor with the uh, encoder built in. We actually built a, a pro oh, sorry, we actually built a prototype in the first quarter. To the next quarter, a uh, second quarter, we decided to continue with our uh, continue with our prototype to improve it based on this uh, system system uh, design diagram. We decided to use four sensors to do the discovery uh, and send the signal back to the microcontroller to do the analyze. Uh, the program will decide which action to take and uh, send the signal to the motor to do the action. Quarter, we only have half of this quarter to work on the micro mouse because uh, the implementation start from the middle of April. So mostly what we did is uh, the integration. We integrated most of the subsystem function uh, such like the sensor reading, uh, my, uh, motor controlling, coder reading with our uh, high-level layout uh, software. Peter so will talk about the mechanical uh, design and the sensor. When we began to, uh, when we began to consider how we're going to design our micro mouse, um, we began to look at other other micro mouse and we noticed that some of them were too oversized. So when you turn in the micro mouse maze, it ran into the walls. We noticed some were uh, lacked a lot of adjustability. That means. If our motor were to uh, break down, you not gotta go in there. And we didn't want to have our micro mouse where where we had to detach five, six different parts just to uh, reach the motor. So we made them uh, uh, accessible. And we also know some were just a little too complex for the uh, micro mouse. So what we did we made a micro mouse much smaller, and um, we made the, we designed the micro mouse so we had enough space to play with the sensors. We gave ourselves, you can see here in the front and the back, a little, a little s simpler. This means that. Um, we made the model, the schematic, and the setup uh, a simple, basic, and easier to understand. So that the next team can also improve on that as the last, as we improve on last. We hope we don't have any walls to, so we can access a lot of our, our wheels and motors, so we can need to, to change them since they broke down. On the left-hand side, we have uh, two sensors facing the sides, and then we have two sensors facing the front for side information and front information. And on the right-hand side, you can see one of our trade-offs, which was we we in making our micro mouse a little smaller. We ended up putting all the electronics on top, and we actually, our, our motor placement kind of didn't go so well, but this is what we ended up with. Thank you. So this is the, the funnest part here, the <laughs> sensor reading. Um, I was in charge of the um, infrared uh, uh, sensors, and um, what I did basically with this, we used a Sharp 2D120 on um, infrared sensor, and we I wrote a, a straight correction program, this straight correction program basically, the side sensors, they take the, 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 the distance between the micro mouse and the side walls, and I made it so that the micro mouse can um, turn in response to those, so that we, the, the micro mouse can find the center line and go down the, uh, the center line of the corridor, so it won't be smashed into the wall. Measure of angle of approach. Also, the, I placed two sensors in the front so that as it approaches a wall in front of it, it can measure the angle of approach, it can measure the wall. And um, so when you're making a left or right turn, it can make a left or right turn plus or minus some angle of adjustment. 
Uh, that way you can make nice sharp clean turns. And also the driving wall attribute, we also use it for the simple function of uh, finding out whether the cell in which the micromonster space has walls on the left, right, or front, which we need to update the memory. So that as the micromonster reverses through the maze, it begins to uh, uh, design the maze. Give it the wall. Yes, this is one of the best parts. Before I could do any math or algorithms or any fancy uh, programming, I, I my data on the left hand side, you see a graph of the raw data coming from the sensors. It doesn't necessarily reflect a common uh, math function. So what I did is um, I had to linearize the, the, the data. So this means that I, I broke up the graph into different segments and I attributed uh, an equation of a line to each segment so that I could, uh, um, so that I could pull um, from this data centimeters. So if I multiply it or divide anything, it would correspond to normal math. This was something I had to do from the beginning. It was really fun to do. To put all this uh, parts together, we have to connect it electrically. Uh, we use the Arduino platform. It uses the 18 Mega 328 microcontroller. It required us to uh, use analog ports to interface our RR sensors. We also needed digital ports to interface the motor controllers that control the DC motors and also the uh, digital ports to also interface the encoders coming out of the motors. We also had to design a power system from a, from a battery to actually run the whole microcontroller and the parts together. What is a motor controller? A motor controller is a, is a device integrated that uses a H-bridge circuit. Based on this circuit, it uses four switches, which are solid state switches that are connected to the terminals of the motors. This allows us to have basic, basic movements, such as moving forward, moving back, braking or coasting. Without these basic functions, we wouldn't be able to even navigate through the, through the maze. As you can see in the chart below, our PWM pulses, we use this to control the, the speed of the motor. What is an encoder? An encoder is a device that's, that got, that's integrated inside our motors. It uses detectors inside our rotor. As the rotor moves, it generates a pulse sequence. We use this pulse sequence, which generates a 0 to 5 volts. We use this to read and detect a certain distance traveled. Without this, we wouldn't be able to even know or even move from one next cell to the other. Um, the Arduino uses a, a C program, very standard, but its own weird way of Arduino C program. So one of our main algorithms to manipulate and control the turnings was, as you can see in this flow chart, was to use the encoders as the main source of feedback. From this, from this feedback, we created a program that initiates the motors. While it's initiating this motor, it controls it in the, inside a loop. While this loop is inside, is, is uh, constantly checking the encoders, and while the encoders is counting the distance, at a certain distance, which we calculated experimentally, it, it stops the motor, meaning that it could be at a 90 or a 180 or, or a move forward technique. Um, how do we put everything together, the sensors, the motor, the microcontroller, and the encoders? Um, we as a team discovered our, came out with four main functions that are outlined on the yellow. The first one is the discover function, and these are the functions that the micro mouse needs to take every time it travels from one cell to the next. So the first thing it does, it discovers. It, it discovers if there are walls, if there are all over, or there's no walls. It then, um, it does that by calling on the sensors and it, then it writes it down back to memory. The next step it takes, it, it, it analyzes. So basically, it, it get all the data that captures from the discovery part, it analyzes the data, it knows where it's at, at, the, at any particular coordinate on the, on the micro mouse, and it, um, it, and it computes the algorithm. The algorithm we used was a flood field algorithm um, with a, a little modification on my part. We also use a counter so that we know how many times we have traveled through a cell. So when it does that, it also um, saves the, uh, the counter to go to the other cell. After it computes, computes the algorithm, it, it, calls, it, it, it calls an action. That action is either a make a right, make a left, or make a 180. Uh, it does that by using the motor and the encoder. And when it does that, it also updates the orientation of the micro mass, so we know where we are uh, facing every time. So we know the, the, the orientation of that position at all times. After that, it moves forward to the next cell, and it just repeats over and over and over again. So basically, uh, we on the Arduino, we had a one kilobyte uh, EEPROM memory, 
and uh, on which we use one by for the uh, for the uh, direction, so we know where the micro mouse is pointing at all times. Uh, we also use one by for the uh, y position and one by for the um, x position or coordinates. We also create a 16 by 16 uh, bit array in which we say that the walk properties for every every single cell. Uh, we also create another 16 by 16 bit array in which we say the distance that the mouse um, at every particular cell was away from the cell. The mouse starts here, this cell is A14 at the beginning of the, of, of, of the maze. It, it thinks it only needs to take 14 steps to get to the, to the center, so that's why the distance is 14. But as we're navigating, and let me go on this side, and it starts walking, it will encounter walls. In this case, um, it knows that the next one is always going from a high number to a lower number. Oops, sorry. So in this case, um, it goes from an A to a 7 to a 6 here. It's trying to go to a 5, but there's a wall. So what it's going to try to do is update it, uh, the cell number to an 8, and it will update the, the, all the other cells. And now it can move to the 7, to the 6, to the 5, or the 3, to the 2, to the 1, all the way to the middle. So that's basically the algorithm. Uh, accomplishments, well, we built the mouse. Uh, and basically, we're able to turn right, left, read sensors right to the memory, we maze the, we've mapped the, 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 the maze and solve it, we use the algorithm. The only thing that um, we lacked a little bit was on the integration. We were at 90%, and I think that's what caused us uh, the second place on the IEEE region competition and the seventh place on the uh, California IEEE MicroMouse competition. Um, I know that we run out of time, uh, we have some problems at the end trying to uh, multi-threading all the things, all the components that you saw that read into memory, the error correction, the wall detection, and we were not feedback on all the errors, and, and we just ran out of time when we got to that competition. But I think basically we 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 were almost there. Uh, it was just one final push to 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 achieve it. You can tell I made a mistake, but I have two error correction programs: <laughs> the straight and the side. That's so actually really it actually tries to correct itself, which is. You see it. See how it recover from one from one side to the other. That was really good in the program. Uh, questions? Uh, good question. So the question is how it, it how does it decide to to turn left or right? Let me just go back here really quick. Um, see the number seven? Actually, I'm sorry. Here, number eight. Um, based on this, on the numbering system, it always tries to go to a lower number. So here it can make either a right or a left, so it's going to make a left because it's trying to go to a 7. So it's always trying to go from a high number to a lower number. So that's that's how it decides to do it. Yes, actually, uh, we save everything on the EEPROM memory, which it doesn't get erased. So we, we kept on saving all the data. And we put it at the beginning, it will already have the data from all the, the walls that it did already, that it traveled. One thing I noticed in the video was that when it got to the final stretch, it was going back and forth and not realizing that there was a way for it to go to the left. Yeah, the question. So once it's on a straight path, how does it know when there is a, a, a path for it to go uh, either right or left? The question was how does it know because it on the video just keep on going straight back and forth. Well, uh, we didn't have a complete maze, so that kind of uh, uh, messes up the algorithm because it's trying to go from a higher number to a lower number and it's trying to, to follow this, this, this maze so when you have just a little portion it, it doesn't, it, it's trying to look for the other coordinates which it doesn't know where to go because can't find them okay. so, 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 so yeah, so that was an error that it was more for testing that we did this time uh, I think that's a really good thing Lars because uh, we saw some micro that the motor failed and the whole micro failed we actually changed our motors I think Ten times. Oh, okay. And so it became it got became very handy. Also, I uh, as you can uh, you can't really tell it's my process here. Um, we zip tied some sections. were very accessible. Uh, we're able to change the motors and make a lot of adjustments. Not just to the motors, but also to the wheels, which were the wheels in between the wheels and wheels. We have a uh, I guess like a, a 90 degree uh, drive, which has some some simple gears, and that those kept failing also. So it was very easy to um it was very uh, easy to go in and repair. That was one of the advantages. We didn't really um, know, think that the motor wouldn't fail that often. We, if we had a 10 motors fail, 
But yes, um, it actually came ahead. It was okay, so, so, so if you ever have a micro mouse NASCAR race, you'll spend less time than this. <laughs>